Hi, my name is Tammy. I'm a human being and today I am going to show you why I plan on not binding my quilted projects in the future. Yes, I said that right. Binding is absolutely my least favorite part of the quilting process. I mean, having to cut those two and a half inch strips, although I do have an AccuQuilt cutter and it makes it easy, and then having to attach them together and make sure you know, it's at the 45 degree angle. I mean, all that binding process is a complete pain in the neck for me. So today I am going to show you what I came up with as an alternative. I have tried different methods of binding traditionally. I've practiced multiple times, but you know what? Listen, it's just not worth it to me. I do not enter my quilted projects into quilt shows. I'm not a perfectionist. I do quilting for the love of it and I want to get the projects gifted to my friends and family. So I'm okay with it not being traditional and I'm totally okay with it not being perfect. If you have mastered attaching your binding to your quilt project, this is not the video for you. You will be repulsed by what I'm about to show you. <laughs> However, if you are interested in an alternative to the traditional way to binding your quilt projects, then stay tuned. This quilt is a quilt that I use on a daily basis. And so I end up washing it once a week. I completed this quilt back in March of 2023, and it is now April of 2024. And I've washed this quilt at least once a week for over a year. And let me show you the results. Stay tuned. This project was my first accidental attempt at surging the edges of my quilt project and just leaving it alone. <laughs> um, let's see, let me show you. So this is one corner and I use the same color serger thread and it's 100% cotton. And as you can see, you know, it's not terrible. And here's that loose serger thread I was telling you about. And then here, is the back side of it. And so again, this quilt has been washed more than 52 times and everything is pretty much still intact. Here, let's look at the other side. This is actually the top of the quilt and I used a four thread serger um, process to secure it. And look, I mean, it's kind of folded over, but it looks good. So let me show you how I'm going to do this on my current project. Stay tuned. So to my surprise, after washing this quilt for over a year, the edges have remained intact. I mean, as you saw, the serger tails are loose. They are not secured in any way. And I thought to myself, hmm, I wonder if I tried this process on another project and the next time using a stronger thread such as the thread that I use for my embroidery projects and then securing the tails properly. Well, today, my friend, I am going to take you on the journey as I attempt to do just that. My understanding of the purpose of binding your quilt is to make sure that the three layers of your quilt sandwich are secured together. And also the binding protects the area that is most vulnerable in your quilt, which is the edges. I get that, but like, why does binding your quarter securing the edges only have to include adding binding and are using the self binding method? In my opinion, it doesn't. I am absolutely in love with thread. I love the stitching process. I think adding thread and stitching is just magical. So that's where I came up with the idea to explore using my serger a little bit more for finishing off my quilt projects. This is my current project that I'll be using for today's example. It is a table topper that I made just very simply because it's colorful and I wanted some spring colors in my home. I used the AccuQuilt cutter to cut all the tumbler shapes out. I pieced them together. I used the end to end quilting designs by designs by Juju to quilt all three layers together. And so the layers I have are of course my quilt top. And as you notice here, the tumbler shapes are still intact. 
And what I'm going to do is use my serger and a straight line process to clean up this edge here so that it's a straight line. And then also same on this end, I'll use the serger to just sort of square that up. The batting is just tr traditional uh, batting cotton and the back I used a old bed sheet, honestly, it's bed linen. And so let me show you the back of this because I use the embroidery to quilt it. This is what the back looks like. I think it looks very pretty. And I know a lot of people are concerned when they do embroidery on the back of their project. Like, will you see the tie in and tie outs? And yes, you do. Um, here's one right here. I'll show you close up. That's a tie in and tie out right there. And then here is where is there another one? I only did three hoopings because of the size of this. So here is another area. Those don't bother me. So I'm not too concerned about it. Now let's get to the main purpose of this video, which is using the serger. Stay tuned. This is Olive and Olive is my baby triumph serger. And today I'm going to be using the four four thread overlock stitch to create the surged edge of my quilt project. You do not need a fancy dancy serger to do this overlock stitch. It's a basic four thread overlock stitch. Um, I am going to be using the orange in my lower looper and the gold in my upper loopers and then the red and the green for my needle threads. And let me go ahead and serge that up and then show you what the finished project looks like. Stay tuned. One step that I did to ensure that I achieved maximum results with one pass through the serger is because this is a tumbler die and the edges are a tumbler quilt and the edges are um, asymmetrical. I just took my yardstick and took my washable chalk pen so and just drew a straight line on this side. And I also did that straight line on the other side. I did not draw the chalk line on the uh, tops and bottom because those are pretty much already straight because of my piecing process. I am going to search this up and show you the finished project. Stay tuned. Ta-da! It is all completed. Here's the front side. And I know it's a little difficult to see the threads. Let me show you the back side. And what I'll do now is go into detail about what I learned and what I will do again in future projects with using this process. Stay tuned. In order to hide my seam tail in the back of my serger seam, I used the chenille needles by DNC and the reason why I selected this type of needle or a darning needle you can use is because the eye of the needle is rather large and it can accommodate the serger thread tail. One hack that I discovered was um, these are thicker, not thicker, but one of the threads is metallic and it's embroidery thread. So it was harder for me to sort of pull that, um, tail and then secure it to put it through the eye of the, of the uh, chenille needle. So what I discovered was I just took a piece of scotch tape, pulled it off. I put it on the end of the threads as so, and then I just wrapped it once I cut off the excess and then I use that bundle to thread through the eye of the needle. Once the thread tail was through the eye of the needle, I then cut off the extra tape and then went on to weave the tail in and out of the seam on the back. I'll show you that now. Stay tuned. One way to minimize the amount of hiding your thread tails at the end of your project is to when you're surging, there's a way to sort of turn on a corner, if you will, to make sure that the threads are continuous. I don't really like that process because it's complicated and I don't want to think that hard. <laughs> so I just surge off all four corners. 
What you see here is something I recommend you avoid at all costs. What I did here is I cut my serger tail way too short. And because of that, um, I was unable to bury those seams or this thread tail into the serger's seam here. And so what I learned was to make sure you have enough thread tail. <laughs> so on this side, I would say I surged off maybe about eight to 10 inches. And so from here to here is five and a half inches worth of tail. So five and a half inches from here to here. And then I cut off another two or three inches in the process of using that scotch tape as well as just polishing it off. So what I did was I just used that needle and I went, I, I don't know, every three or four stitches and I wove it in and out. And so I started here, went all the way across here and ended up right there. And then I used my scissors to cut it off and this should be pretty secure. Let me show you another side. Um, this is another side, same, same concept from about here to here, which is, I don't know, this is a little bit longer. This one is six inches. You don't have to do that much. I just did because I surged off a lot and I wanted to make sure that they stayed secure. So that's it, my friend. Thank you so much for joining me in this project. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and wash it and I'll probably just give it a good press so that everything can lay flat. And then I'll be on to my next project. So there you have it. I really do enjoy this process for finishing my quilted projects. However, I did identify a major area that I can improve upon. And that area is to add um, some eight or 12 weight decorative thread in both my upper and lower loopers. So then the uh, spaces between the stitches will look fluffier and look more filled in. So in future projects, I will be using decorative threads to uh, search the edge of my projects. And then we're gonna see what that looks like. If you found this video even an ounce bit entertaining for whatever reason, whether you're like, that girl is a hot mess because I would never do that to my beautiful quilt, or you go, now that's interesting. Either way, I would so appreciate it if you went ahead and subscribed and joined me in my next video. Until then, keep quilting a little bit every day and you'll be surprised at how many projects you get completed. Thank you. Bye-bye.